Series 6. 1. Who gets the benefits from welfareism? Poverty programs, as operated by federal, states, and local governmental agencies, are an expensive item for every taxpayer. The total cost as of 1980 was $200 billion every year. This is an indication of perhaps some kind of concern for the poor, but is it any solution to the problems of poverty? A Temple University professor, according to Review of the News, March the 3rd, 1981, pointed out, If we simply gave the money to the poor, each eligible family of four would get close to $40,000 a year. The poor, however, get no such income from our welfare agencies. In fact, their income from welfare in no way resembles the appropriations for welfare. According to a Hoover Institute economist, the poor are a gold mine. By the time they are studied, advised, experimented with and administered, the poor have helped many a middle-class liberal to achieve affluence with government money. Obviously, some money must be spent to administer welfare. The problem is that these federal, states and local bureaucracies are spending a disproportionate amount for administration to the points where welfare programs are better for the welfare of the bureaucracies than for the poor. We should not be surprised that welfare has become a growth industry. Welfareism does more for the state, its power and its bureaucracy than it does for the poor. Some critics and many states have very strict rules controlling every private or religious charity. No solicitation of funds is permitted unless very strict rules are complied with and in some instances groups not meeting the rules are put on a blacklist. Some of these rules are common sense requirements to prevent fraud. Others tend to be unreasonable. The important fact is that various state agencies would not qualify if a like set of rules applied to them. There are abuses in the private sector, but these are few and exceptional, whereas the abuses in the parts of status agencies are commonplace and flagrant. More than a few writers of recent years, including George Gilder, have shown that welfareism is a detriment to the poor and a breeding ground for a large variety of social problems. To this we can add that it is now becoming apparent that the major beneficiary of welfareism has been a power-hungry state. In other words, it is the federal, states and local agencies of civil government that get the real benefits from welfareism. The poor and the taxpayers are the victims of it. In the name of welfare, we have been creating a power state.